Hi, welcome to part two of this lesson, five investing mistakes costing you millions in profit. If you have not watched part one, go watch part one and I see you back here. All right, assuming you've watched part one, let's continue with the second part. So mistake number two is listening to the predictions of experts. You know, every single day when you watch the mainstream news, you've got all these talking hits on TV, these economists, these stock market experts giving predictions about the market. Oh, the market's going to go up, market's going to crash, gold's going up, bonds going down. And let me tell you that when you listen to all these predictions, you're never ever going to get consistent results for yourself. You know, here's an example, right? So 19th of March, about a month ago, right, David Stockman, one of the experts, and he's definitely an expert because it's called Stockman, right? So, you know, he's born to talk about stocks, right? And he said that the virus is sparking a financial crisis that warns Wall Street is toast. So imagine you read this article, most people will freak out. Most people say, oh my God, I'm going to sell stocks or I'm not going to buy stocks. And guess what? On the 19th of March, if you had sold your stocks in fear, you would have missed that 33% rally. Or if you had failed to buy, you would have missed that rally as well. Now, is this an isolated incident? I think not. Let me show you the last 10 years, all right? From 2009 to 2019, the S&P 500, the ETF, went from about, you know, 70 points to 290 points, okay? That was over 262% return in 10 years. Now, I tell my students, the stock index always goes up in the long run. So there are two things you can do. Number one is dollar cost averaging, which means every month, just put a bit of money in the markets and close your eyes through the ups and downs. You will always make money, all right? Buy and hold. Or number two, you use trend following by using the moving averages, right? So when the 50 moving average blue line goes above the green line and they're sloping up, that's when you buy. So you buy there, for example, when the 50 crosses back below the 150 and they change slope, you sell. So if you had just bought and held, you'd have made 262% in 10 years, right? Really great returns. If you had used trend following, right? You'd have bought over there and sold over there. Bought back here, sold here, bought back here, sold there, bought back there, all the way to there. So whether you're trend following, following the trend, or buy and hold, either way, you would have made, you know, double digit, triple digit returns in the market in those 10 years, because it was 10 year bull run. But most retail investors did not make any money during this 10 year bull run. And you know why? Because they listened to predictions from the experts. Let me show you all the, the headlines of these last 10 years, right? So let's begin with 2010, right? July 3rd, 2010, this was the New York Times, right? What did it say? Market forecast that says take cover. With the stock market lurching again, plenty of investors are nervous and some are downright bearish. Then there's Robert Preacher, right? This, this guy, right? The market forecaster and social theorist who is in another league entirely. Mr. Preacher is convinced that we have entered a market decline of staggering proportions, perhaps the biggest of the last 300 years. Holy shit. If you had read this article in 2010, would you have bought stocks? No. You probably sell your stocks in fear, right? And if you had sold your stocks in 2010, what would have happened? You would have missed one of the greatest bull runs in the stock market history because you listen to the predictions of experts, right? What's the next news headline? So that was 2010, okay? The next one was 2011 on, on April. This was USA Today. What did it say? S&P lowers its outlook. Could US default on its debt? So at that time, it was all about the US government you know, defaulting on its debt because of the debt ceiling. And again, that freaked people out. They say, I'm going to buy US stocks, selling all my US stocks. And again, they got out of the market, missed the bull run. So this was 2011. 2012, the following year, this time, 
on CNBC. Europe debt defaults are poised to rattle stocks. November 26, 2012. So now they're saying, hey, not only is the US going to default, but Europe is going to default as well, right? The Eurozone debt crisis, Greece going bankrupt. Oh my God, sell. And again, they missed the bull run, right? Next year, 2013, right? October 7th. Bloomberg, US default seen as catastrophe dwarfing Lehman's fall. You read these articles, you'd freak out, you sell all your stocks, you miss the bull run again in 2013. 2013, again, doomsday poll says 87% risk of stock crash by the end of the year. Did, did stocks crash in 2013? No, they went up double digit in 2013. All right, next year, Oh, that's Mr. Stockman again. You know, he always appears every few years. And this was back in 2015, where Stockman said stocks and bonds will crash soon. They never crashed in 2015, right? In fact, from 2015 to 2019, it went up again double digits. Okay, and then in 2016, the next year, Fortune says, here comes the biggest stock market crash in a generation. Again, 2016, no crash, market went up again, all right? And in 2018, why markets are still heading for a crash? So every bloody year, there's always someone who says the market is going to crash. Now, eventually, of course, it's going to crash, right? A broken clock is right at least twice a day. The fact is that in the long run, the stock market always goes up. And 90% of the time, the stock market is in a bull market, and it's only 10% of the time that we have a market crash or bear market. But if you read this garbage every single year, guess what? You miss out that 90% of the time where you can multiply your wealth incredibly. So lesson two, ignore the predictions of experts. Why? Because no one can predict the short-term market direction. No one. Not me, not Warren Buffett, no one. In the long run, the market will always go up. In the short term, anything can happen. So all we can do is we can only guess what's going to happen and we follow the market direction. So what we do as investors is really simple. We focus on the fundamentals and valuations of the individual companies. In other words, as long as it's a good company with strong fundamentals, rising sales and earnings and the undervalued, we accumulate the shares and we follow the market trend. So when the market's on an uptrend, we stay long. When the market reverses into a downtrend, we can go short. We use put options to protect our positions. All right, mistake number three is thinking that low price stocks have more potential than high price stocks. So let me give you an example, right? Let's go back to the 16th of March of 2020. Imagine you've got two stocks. The first stock is selling at $5.90 per share with a P.E. ratio of nine times. And the second stock is $1,600 per share with a P.E. ratio of 70 times. Guess which stock most retail investors would rather buy? Yeah, most retail investors would say, hey, I'd rather buy the low price stock because I can buy more shares. But with this high price stock, I can only buy one share or maybe even half a share, right? And retail investors also tend to buy low PE stocks and avoid high PE stocks. It's a huge mistake. Why? Now, this stock, by the way, is General Electric, GE. Now, three months ago, it was at $5.60. After three months today, this stock is at $6.29. It only gained 12% in the last three months. The stock on my right, you, you guessed it, right? It's Amazon, right? So three months ago, Amazon was at $1,600. Today, Amazon is at $2,400, which gave a 47% gain versus a 12% gain. So why did Amazon outperform GE? Two reasons. The first reason is because Amazon as a company has much higher growth rates. Its sales and profits are growing in a much stronger way. So for example, in the last five years, Amazon has been growing at 30% return per year and is projected to continue growing at 30% a year. Whereas GE, in the last five years, has seen declining growth and its projected growth rate is in the single digits. 
So it's not about the price of the stock, it's about the growth potential. The second reason is this. See, to many people, Amazon looks expensive at $1,600 per share. But if you are a trained investor and you know how to value the company using a discounted cash flow analysis, you realize that $1,600 is dirt cheap. For example, uh, when I do an intrinsic value calculation, right, on Amazon, you can see that based on a 34% growth rate in the next five years. By the way, these numbers are not by me, they are by analysts, right? So for example, you can see on Amazon, the next five years is projected to grow at 34% in the next five years, all right? So using that projection, assuming it grows at 34% the next five years, and the growth halves to 15% and finally to 4%, which is just a GDP plus inflation growth rate, Amazon is valued at $4,300 per share. That's the intrinsic value, which means at $1,600, Amazon is at half price, is dirt cheap. So you can see that whether a stock is cheap or not, has nothing to do with the absolute price. It's got to do with comparing the price to its intrinsic value. So Amazon is dirt cheap at 1,006. But General Electric, if you do an intrinsic value calculation, you find that it is valued at only about $7 per share. So it's only 16% undervalued, whereas Amazon is 60% undervalued. Hence, you can see the tremendous change in a stock price. So lesson number three, a low price stock may not necessarily have greater potential. What's more important is to look at the projected growth rate and historical growth potential of that company. At the same time, a $5 stock could be expensive and a $1,000 stock could be cheap by comparing the stock price to the intrinsic value. So the point is to only buy stocks that are fundamentally undervalued by comparing it to the intrinsic value. And it's something that you learn in the value momentum investing course, where you get all the calculators to help you to value the shares and to only buy stocks with high growth potential. Let me give you another example, right? So if you look at this stock and it's listed in the Singapore Stock Exchange, it's called Singtel. It's a telecommunication stock. Now, five years ago, it was selling at $4.50 per share, okay? Now, compare that to Google at five years ago was selling at $450 per share US. So imagine if you had $450 in capital, would you rather buy this stock where you could buy over 100 shares with your 450? Or would you buy this stock where you can only buy one share? Again, most retail investors will say, hey, this looks like a better deal. I get 100 shares, but over here I get only one share. Again, you can't think that way. You have to ask yourself which company has a greater growth potential? Which company is more undervalued compared to its intrinsic value? And the answer is Google. And so you can see that five years later, Singtel with the lower growth rate Right from 450, it ended up at two dollars 77 cents. So you would have lost 39 percent of your capital. But if you invested in Google, like I did over five years ago, a 450 has become 1500 dollars per share, a 300 percent growth in my capital. Now, mistake number four is a really common mistake, and it's the mistake where investors do not pull the trigger because of the fear that what if the market goes lower after I buy? What if I buy the stock and it goes even lower? So it's the desire to catch the bottom that causes many investors to never get in and catch the bull run. Now, here are some important facts that you gotta be aware of. Number one, nobody knows where the bottom of the market is or where the stock is gonna bottom. No one knows, right? But the good news is you don't have to catch the bottom to make a fortune, to be a successful investor. I don't know where the bottom is. I can only guess, but I could be wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Why? As long as you buy a great quality company with a wide economic moat that you know will increase in value over time, 
and you pay a price that is reasonably below the intrinsic value, you have done your job as an investor. That's it. Because you know, over time, you'll be richly rewarded, okay? But in the short term, from the time you buy to the time the share increases in value, anything can happen. And it really doesn't matter. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine if I told you that you bought a stock today at $10, all right? And in the future, in a year or two years, you'll be at $50. Would you be quite happy? You may say, yeah, I'll be pretty happy, right? Okay, what if I then told you that after you bought it at $10, it went down to $5 before going to $50? Would you be upset now? You shouldn't be upset, right? Because it doesn't really make a difference. The point is, if it goes to $50 eventually, it doesn't matter where it goes in the short term. But the trouble is many retail investors have this psychological fear that what if I buy and it goes lower, right? The fear of being wrong or the fear of regret that, you know, I could have bought it lower. And it is this fear and this desire of picking the bottom that they never ever get into a great company at a discount and they miss the opportunity when it goes into a bull market. So let me give you a real life example, right? Now, uh, if you watch a video I made about one year ago, exactly a year ago, let me find it for you, right? This was um, on YouTube. I published it on the 14th of May, 2019, a year ago. And at that time, I was saying that, hey, a great company to buy is Amazon, right? Because the quality company, it was really, really undervalued. And using just a 10-year discounted cash flow, I valued Amazon at $2,900 per share, almost $3,000 per share. And at that time, it was selling at $1,600 per share. All right. So in other words, it was selling at roughly about uh, almost 50% discount, right? So sorry, on the 14th of May, it was selling at $1,800. Intrinsic value, $3,000, selling at almost a 50% discount. And I said, you know what? This company, I know it will go up to $3,000 over time, right? When? I don't know. We can't predict the future. But I know it's going to go to $3,000, right? So what happened after that video was released? Did it go to 3,000 immediately in a straight line? No, all right? From 1,008, when the video was released, guess what? It dropped to 1,007. So some of you who may have watched my video and bought at 1,008 and it dropped to 1,007, you say, Adam, you were wrong. It didn't go up, it went down. Like I told you, no one can predict the short-term direction. Anything can happen in short-term, right? But guess what? Today, one year later, it's at $2,400, which is almost at that intrinsic value. So in a year, Amazon has re returned 37.5% growth in your capital. Now today, as I've revalued Amazon based on its new earnings and growth rates, I know it is worth about $4,000 per share. So I know it's gonna to go to 4,000 when I've got no idea, but it will be at 4,000 eventually. So even if I buy it 2004 and it drops to $1,000, I don't care, who cares? I'm just gonna buy more shares because I know it's gonna to go to 4,000. So what happens in the meantime, it doesn't matter. In fact, if it drops after I buy, that's even better news because it only means I can buy even more shares at a bigger discount. And that's what happens when you know exactly what you're buying, you have done the fundamental analysis of the company and you've got no more fear. The same thing is true in an overall market perspective. Like I keep saying, in the long run, the stock market always goes up. The market is rigged to always go up, but it doesn't go up in a straight line. It goes through bull markets and bear markets. Now, since 1935, we have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bull markets and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bear markets. Now, if you take a look at a typical bull market, you can see that this bull market lasted 13.9 years and the market gained 800%. This bull market in blue lasted 15 years, gaining 900% and so on and so forth. The last bull market lasted nine years and gained 350%.
So these are the bull markets. Now, if you add up all the bull markets, it consists of 78 years since 1935. If you look at the bear markets, the ones in red, where the market dropped, it was six months, six months, 1.6 years, 1.8 years, three months, two years, 1.3 years. If you add up all the bear markets, it adds up to eight years. So that's why I said, in the long run, the market is in a bull market 91% of the time, okay? Now, if you look at bear markets, the market could drop, you know, anywhere from minus 22% to, you know, minus 50%, and no one knows where's the bottom. But here's the thing, after every bear market, you will always have the next bull market. Again, during this bear market, we drop from the top down to minus 36%, okay? So that's the time I said, hey, we are at a potential market bottom. So I started buying stocks. Now, could it have been possible that after I bought, it made a second bottom? Of course it's possible, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because even if I bought at minus 36% and it dropped to minus 50%, what would I do? I'll just buy more. Why? Because I know eventually the bear market will end. And when the bear market ends and the bull market begins, it's going to take us up 300% or 800% or 100% or whatever. The point is the bull market will be many more times the bear market. Now, when I bought a month ago, when the market was down minus 36%, people said, Adam, but isn't there a risk that the market could go even lower? I said, of course there's a risk. But to me, there's an even bigger risk of not buying at minus 36%. Because if I don't buy now, what if it really is the bottom? And if I don't buy now, and it starts to go all the way up to 300, 800%, I would have missed the chance of buying a great company or the index at a discount. And I have to then wait another 10 years for the next major bear market to happen. Does it make sense? So lesson number four, no one can predict the exact bottom. So don't bother picking the bottom. As long as you buy shares of great companies that you know will increase in value over time, as long as you buy the index, they will always go higher. As long as you buy at a reasonable discount to intrinsic value, it doesn't matter. Even if it goes lower, guess what? Buy more shares at a bigger discount, which means you're going to make even more profits when the bull market begins. All right, mistake number five, buying mediocre, low-quality companies that have dropped the most. You know, a lot of people ask me, hey Adam, should I buy the airline stock? Should I buy the hotel stock? Should I buy oil and gas stocks? And I say, why in the world do you wanna buy those stocks? And they say, because it has dropped the most. Airlines are down 70%, hotels are down 90%, right? For example, this energy company, Chesapeake Energy, from $500 per share is down to $14, a 95% drop. So retail investors always think, hey, I buy the shares that drop the most so that it's got a bigger uh, recovery potential. Now, I don't think that way, right? Now, I don't like to buy airline stocks or hotel stocks or oil and gas stocks. Why? Because they have been fundamentally damaged because of the crisis. Their sales and profits have gone down and will continue to stagnate for quite a long time. Instead, I don't like to buy stocks that have dropped the most in a crash. I like to buy stocks that have dropped the least during the crash. I like to buy companies whose sales and profits are actually increasing during the crisis. And I call these the coronavirus recession-proof stocks, the stay-at-home stocks. Because the longer people stay at home, the longer the lockdown is, these companies will continue to grow their sales and profits. Now, what are these companies? I made a video on this a couple of months ago. I hope you watched it, right? This was back in, there we go. This was back on March the 9th, 2020. I created a video called the top 20 coronavirus proof stocks. And said, these are the companies you want to buy because these companies are not affected by the virus. 
And among the 20 companies, we've got the Magav companies. What are Magav? What's Magav? Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook. That's right. These companies, their profits increase during the crisis. So you can see that by buying these five companies, when the Dow Jones has rebounded, that's sorry, the S&P 500 has rebounded, you can see that Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon have rebounded even faster compared to the index. All right, so what's the lesson here? The lesson is this, buy the strongest performing stocks in a crash, not the weakest performing ones because they will rebound the fastest. So I do hope you've enjoyed this short video lesson on the five costly mistakes that most investors make. Learn from this mistake so you can, can continue to magnify your returns in the stock markets in the future. This is Adam Koo. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Do subscribe to the channel to get the next video as fast as possible. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.